Hello, this is Michael Canadas with the Grovian Doll Museum at Carmel Doll Shop. We are here on a Monday morning after our Cheryl Williams uh, workshop dressing uh, Bebe Charity, and we dressed her as Mademoiselle Felice Chanel. We didn't want to miss this opportunity when we have someone like, well, like Cheryl here to not have a talk with all of you out, out in, in the world. So here's Cheryl Williams. And those of you that don't know Cheryl Williams, Cheryl Williams is a international uh, historian on costume, doll costuming, doll making, and you're also an antique doll collector. I am, you absolutely. Are. Okay. Absolutely. Ever so, since the beginning of my doll making, So you I started out the, making first. But at the same time collecting. Okay. So, so bas basically you decided to take it from like studying the old masters exactly. before the you were going to make your right. own. Right. Okay. Absolutely. And then you kind of eventually, you're still doing both teach, teaching China painting and costume. Yes, absolutely. I still teach painting and the basics of doll making and then, but mostly have moved into the costuming realm. Right. Because, so. and she's not going to be teaching making China porcelain heads here because it's too messy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But okay. you do, once a year you come out and you do a class for us. Right. And that some classes that Cheryl teaches, um, there's not just one, it's not just one trip to study our, our historical, I think we safe to say they're masterpieces. Right. right. So the, the first piece that we'd like to share is this is the Grobian's Mademoiselle Pouille Chanel. Very famous lady. F famous lady. Very She's famous. famous all over the world with, she with, certainly with is. doll makers. Yes. But here's what I have to tell the public. They try to copy her from um, photographs. Right. It's not the it same. It's not possible. It's not the same. Cheryl is the first person that got it. You got it right. Thank you. It's just absolutely perfect. The only difference is that your doll's a little chubbier. Yes, she is. <laughs> she is. This is a nice slim body, and mine is a little pudgy in the middle. Yes. But that's the body. So but I want to. Sh I want to sh want the public. Now we had a class, and I think they did outstanding. They work, don't did you? fabulous work, yes. and many of them actually finished. Much to my amazement, yes. they finished their and costumes. That, and this so. is not a. Um, an easy thing no, to do. Not, at not all. only is it not an easy thing to do technically, it's not easy to find all the right fabrics. Right. And then I, I want the public to realize that you see this totally different color combo. Right. But when I was doing all the studying on this doll, and it was actually three trips to the Grovey and to come up with all the right proportions and be able to study and um, all the costume inside and out, um, that actually this is the blue that this used to be, mm -hmm. very, very close bright. to that. Um, and the fun thing was the students really enjoyed the fact that they said, we've never had blue underwear before. And if, if we were able to go up under her, and we knew it was blue because we could see in the seams where it hadn't faded that it was blue, but she still has her blue underwear there. And didn't it appeared to me that the underwear was very different than anything oh, I've ever seen. Totally, yes. totally, totally different from anything I've ever done before. And though we can't look at her, we can turn her around and you see this wonderful bustle petticoat here. Built in. And yes, totally was. Yep. And it was blue. And it was it blue. blue. It was, it is still is blue under her. So with all the layers of ruffling, um, so that's... That was a fun, really fun thing. And, and this was a project we did that Darlene Lane created the, the doll, doll for us. Yes. And that um, Pat Hauser created, our, created our shoes. shoes. Yes. Because we really weren't going to put the, the class over the edge. No, the shoes. making the shoes would have done So that was a wonderful, that. Yes. wonderful thing. Yes. And um, so it, 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 and I should, we should give them a little history of Pauline Chanel because a lot of people don't know Pauline Chanel. Pauline Chanel is one of the oldest characters, theatrical characters ever. And it's part of the uh, Commedia dell'arte series, which really has its roots going back to the beginning of theater, uh, mm -hmm. the Greeks. 
But really, the, the, the fame of Polichinelle with children is the 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th century. Okay. And uh, uh, to prove my point, this is, this is the oldest historical book about dolls. And if you notice on the cover, it's um, um, taken from an 18th century engraving, circa 17, uh, nine, probably 1790. Look who's there. Police Chanel. There's a doll here. Police Chanel. This is probably children playing. Perhaps Police Chanel is marrying the doll, which she was married 3,200 times. <laughs> so... Um, yeah. What is fun, so throughout this early book, Police Chanel is everywhere. He didn't really start to fade out of the toy world mm -hmm. until 1938. Wow. And I've done a that. Long that, run. that was a long run. It didn't, he didn't disappear, but by 1938, Mickey Mouse came in too. Oh, I see. And Mickey Mouse okay. kind of took, took over, over the imagination. His... Right. So even today, if you went to a Paris park, you'd see a guignon and Polichinel would be, there would be some kind of uh, play with Polichinel. Polichinel is very much like Punch. Punch is a descendant of Polichinel. Okay, so it's a descendant, because I, yes. I didn't know the connection there. It's a descendant. Okay. Now, unlike Punch is a wife beater and rotten, Polichinel is a lover. Ah. Uh -huh. And it's a, he, he's uh, soft. Um, um, but he does say things, poli political things, religious mm -hmm. things, things that other people can't say. Oh. So he's been used and he's done it with humor. Okay. Never, ne never actually really mean. Mm -hmm. um, now, did you, did you notice this? Yes. <laughs> yes. So Polichin significant. Polichino often worked with pigs. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, trained fun. pigs. And train dogs. Oh, all yes. right. So he often worked with pigs. And this is Simon and Halbig's version of Polichinelle. So this was made for, um, German made, but made for France. Okay. So he was always in toy catalogs. If you look at toy catalogs from the 19th century, 20th century, most of the 20th century, he's there okay. on every page. But this would probably be one of the... Um, most common, inexpensive police chanels. Uh -huh. With a, a paper mache comp, if you want to call it composition, paper mache, either one, wooden feet, wooden. very light, very mm -hmm. lightweight. This would have been cheap. You could have bought, bought this for a, a sweetheart. And this was also a gift that a man, young man would give to a young lady. Oh. And it signified, I like you. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's fun. Yes. And but what do you think this is, Sean? I never do. Doll, did. puppet, marionette. Maybe all of those things. Kind of. But what it really is, is this, this would, it, it was intended to be, this hook to be used to hang over a crib. Amazing. So uh, basically, it, this out of this yeah, and, and it would make there. little noise, and, and I think the child could chew on it. <laughs> and these were very inexpensive, uh -huh. so they could, Play with it, and then when it's gone, throw it out. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're rare today. That's not yeah. Not many survive yeah. that kind of. So that kind uh, of play. unfortunately, our oldest police Chanel we had was a little Grodner tall, and it he's going a wandering. Oh. But here you have, we had basically a Grodner tall in it with a police Chanel with a hump. But there, here's a little Commedia dell'arte player. Uh huh. Okay. And so they they were very early pieces. And then here's a wonderful oh, wax, wax, just yes. a wonderful piece with original costumes and all the bells. And the great hat. And the great hat. Um, just for your information, the girls do not have humps. Okay, all right. So that's why she... She's a girl. Right. Now, occasionally okay. I've seen some girls that could be once in a while with a hump, and I think it was a, a little accident. I don't think that they are supposed. <laughs> they were supposed. To I don't be think that they're way. supposed to have one okay. because here we have an early. This is probably 1860s, Mademoiselle Police Chanel, and then oh, here we have probably a late 70s. This is a a, 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 a tree, long face, right. Cody Jumeau, all that stuff, um, with hers, 
And of course, you can see her she bells has no, and yes, her bells. Yes, yes. And these were fancy dress costumes. Mm -hmm. They were um, Used carnival for balls costumes and that exactly. kind of thing. And for... speaking of balls, so if you were at a ball, you could take your marat, which is basically mm -hmm. fleece Chanel, and use this as a hi. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, well, he yeah. doesn't have a hump, but he's got right. a rotund body. Yes, he does. And it's fun. They're, they're, yes. they're, there's just something that's so magical about them. And um, we should look at two. Just, oh, hold on. Hold, hold on. on to it. Here's something else that I should show you, Cheryl. Oh. Now, he has not gotten his hump yet. So he's slightly clown-like, uh -huh. but if you look at the nose, the, the hook nose, it's a very similar, similar. face to that Simon Hall. But there's face. something that hasn't happened. Uh, Felicia Chanel takes everything to excess: love, okay. marriage, romance, wine, conversation, <laughs> and also he's he's a glutton. Oh. So he one day he swallowed a pickle. Uh huh. And it lodged in his chest and kept growing. Is that what that's that what is? it is? Oh, that's that was that's it is. amazing. So, and I should oh. at that point I should say, if you want to really learn about the, uh, not to blow our own horn, but this this has in the English language the most information that you're going to find about the history of Felicia now, okay. and it's told in a storybook form visually with music and, and but oh, no, this no. has it all because uh -huh. uh, our, our, we have a, a couple of friends that are French historians and they sent us all of their resource material. Wow. So a lot of the things that I did not know, I learned and we incorporate and, this into it. Into this but what do you think that this is used for? Well, I looked at the string and I wondered at first if he was a climber because sometimes there are climbers, mm -hmm. but I don't know. This was for a window shade. <laughs> Amazing. So it would be a, a weight of uh -huh. a window and, shade. And, a and you know, when you, when you see, if you think about police Chanel as like Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse, mm -hmm. you know, I don't collect Disney, but when I see uh, an old Mickey or Minnie, they kind of make you happy. Yeah. So this was one of those kinds of wonderful novelty Thanks. things. And every company made, so here's, a china head, you can say say, mm -hmm. say he's a clown, but that's a classic Blue Chanel hat. Uh -huh. So you could put him on a little body and make a, a Blue Chanel. And then here's a wonderful bar and cross shield. Wonderful Blue oh, Chanel, yes. just super. Great, the great pickle in the front. The pickle in the, the back. <laughs> and a pickle in the back. That's right. <laughs> they don't always have them in back and front. Really? No, you can see okay. them with just one. But Are they it's heavy? mostly two. Uh -huh. I mean, it was a very uh, artistic thing. And I think it would be a great thing for our next year's class. We're, we're not doing this next year, next year, but wouldn't it be great if we had a miniature police oh, for them? Oh, to hold. Yeah, that, oh, would, be that would be a great accessory. But here, here again, here's... Oh, well, that's fun. Here's one with just a hump in the back. Oh, true. There's nothing yeah, in there's this front. there's nothing in the front. No. This is slightly punch-like, too. Mm, I mean, mm -hmm. I think he's... Yes. I mean, and there's a fine line between the two. Uh huh. Except that police Chanel is really very. Um, and and tell me about the difference in the hat styles. We've got this, the curved one like this, and then we've got the, uh, what do you call this? Napoleon kind of style hat. Tricorn hat. Tri well, not tricorn because no, there's it's only not. two points. Yeah. I think it's a police Chanel style hat. Okay. I mean, I All don't right. think it's. Um, uh, I mean, I. I mean, if you really think about it, his heyday was the 17th, 18th century. So it's started, it's influenced by that. And yes. then by the 19th century, it's um, very um, nostalgic mm -hmm. of, a, of a different time. Okay. I think it's his own personal style. Okay. And usually they're always dressed in silks and, and, and fancy, beautiful laces. Yes, and, and, and metallic. He's an over the top and, character. Yes. Uh -huh. And I think once you. Um, I mean, in our career selling dolls, we have had hundreds and hundreds of them. Uh -huh. I just haven't always been able to keep them. Right. And um, like there's a famous automaton of the crying girl with her broken police Yes, And there's absolutely. just, he's everywhere if you uh -huh. open your, 
eyes to see so. him. Um, but, you know, this was a, a really fun um, uh, thing for Sh Cheryl to do, and I know that you were really challenged. I was very challenged, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's like I said, it, three trips back here to study the antique because I couldn't get it without really going into fine detail. And did we detail. show the back too? Because I think they I'm should not, see. I'm not sure. The and other the, thing we probably should show oh, that yes. the girls adored was the little cap that sits under her. Which it seems like it should be totally not right. Right. But it but is. But it is. But because, it is. Because, because there it is, right on our antique. And you it's, really, you really got that down. I mean, it, uh, I mean, I don't know how you got such a close match to the, the little, um, what do we call the little side? Well, I sort of called them rosette, ear rosettes or something. I didn't you know get to what name else to it because no one else would know. Else that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the girls really, really love doing that little cap. And I think that there will be, um, uh, we don't have a lot of uh, kits, kits available, extra kits. But we have, we're going to have a few. Yes. And, and is it possible in the future that you might do some more for us? Yes. That okay. certainly could. Yeah, that could be. Yes. And, and it, is it possible to, to have this done sized up for like a... Because well, it's always, it's not really difficult to size up a pattern. Because using the proportional scale, if you take the size of your original doll and what you want to make it for, and dial it in the proportional scale will tell you exactly what percentages to use on your pattern reductions. I, I think a lot of people that, in my career, I have noticed that the we'll call them the fancy dressed brews, mm -hmm. you know, the matadors, the um, uh, little Bo Peep, the Mademoiselle Pili Chanel. They're usually size seven and ah. size eight. Okay. I mean, occasionally there's some right. little ones, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of collectors out there that have this, this size, size doll. doll. Yes. And if they could... If they could take that pattern. Of course, you've always got to refit it. Because right. like we said, she's much slimmer through the, through the torso than, than the, this and, little group. And we have the joy of our, in our class that, you know, all these dolls were, are handmade, just like the original ones. Yes. And some are a little fatter than and others. And some were a little thinner. We <laughs> so, did yes. some real fitting <laughs> yes, on, in too. class to so get everybody to be This could be a great, great future project. Yes. If you could, if, if, you know, and it seems like these things are just easy to come by. They're not. No. The fabric, <laughs> good fabric today is hard to get, just right. like it was in the 19th century. Yes. Right, right. Okay. Well, thank you so much You're for being welcome. here. My and pleasure, as we'll, always. We'll do it again sometime yes. in the future. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.